Recall that when we were planning the synthesis of Demerol, we engaged in a little bit of electron pushing in an exercise that I called mechanistic retrosynthesis. The idea of that electron pushing was to try to generate places where formal charge is located, where the charge is stabilized by resonance or an inductive effect, really any of the stability factors in general. In the Demerol case, one of the key bonds related to this idea was this bond highlighted in red. And recall that the idea there was we could take the electrons in this single bond and push them toward this carbon, which is an alpha carbon, which with respect to the ester, and generate a negative charge stabilized by resonance, stabilized by delocalization into the adjacent carbonyl group. That electron pushing led us to draw a structure with negative charge at that carbon and a new lone pair corresponding to the electrons that were formerly part of that bond, highlighted in red, with the remaining amino-containing fragment kind of hanging off, and now with a location of positive charge, I'll just explicitly draw it out, a CH2 group where the carbon is formerly positively charged there as well. Now that we've seen the overall synthesis, we can definitively state that this intermediate, this reactive intermediate as it would be, does not appear at any point within the synthesis. However, these structures containing these formal charges are still conceptually extremely useful because they point us toward synthetic approaches or more specific structures that we can use to accomplish the goal of establishing this bond via electron flow basically in this general direction from the negatively charged atom to the positively charged atom, from the nucleophile to the electrophile, we might say. These hypothetical intermediates that we generated by pushing electrons around and engaging in mechanistic retrosynthesis are called synthons. Synthons are the hypothetical intermediates generated by a bond disconnection. And synthons illustrate locations where either full or more commonly, in fact, partial charges could exist in actual viable starting materials for a transform. So in this case, these locations in the case of the positive charge, corresponded to partial positive charge, as we'll see in a second, whereas the negative charge here was actually a full negative charge and an enolate that was generated via deprotonation with LDA. Once we've generated a synthon like this and noticed something like, oh, this negative charge is stabilized by delocalization, the next task after generating these synthons is to work backwards to an actual compound that can serve as an analog to the synthon. And we'll actually want to think about these two synthons separately. The, the positively charged synthon is completely distinct in a sense once we've made the disconnection from the enolate. And so let's kind of treat each in turn, generating at the end of this process a structure that we can actually hold in a bottle, a stable compound that is analogous to this structure containing these two synthons. And let's start with the portion highlighted in blue, the electrophilic portion. Now that, as we've drawn it, is a primary carbocation, right? And so it's clear that that structure is not something we're going to be able to generate because of the instability of primary carbocation reactive intermediates. But what we can do is attach something to that carbon that induces a bond dipole such that the carbon is partially positively charged. This would mean that the X group that we attached would have to be partially negative, an electronegative group, right? And, and that could be any of a variety of different types of groups. Really, anything that we can think of as a good nucleophage or good leaving group could work here. And in practice, we choose the one that gives the highest yield at the end of the day is, is really what guides the choice. It's an empirical choice between these different leaving groups. The key general point is attaching that group has introduced partial positive charge where we see full positive charge in our synthon. In the case of the enolate, the precursor to an enolate typically is a structure in which we just have a hydrogen linked to the carbon that ultimately becomes negatively charged. And the idea there is that we're just going to generate the negative charge via deprotonation with a strong base, something like LDA. And so we can add that hydrogen here to generate again a real structure, a stable compound, something we can put in a bottle that is a precursor to the synthon structure. And in this case, we're going to end up with full negative charge at this alpha carbon after deprotonation. So the synthon was a really useful conceptual tool for thinking about how to work backwards in a retrosynthetic direction. Even though it's not something that will actually generate in the course of the synthesis, which is why you'll often see it kind of represented in quotes like this,
for a lot of functional purposes and for conceptual and abstract purposes, we can think of the synthon as equivalent to the actual structure we use in that the actual structure or you know, the starting material plus a reagent, like a base, is functionally equivalent to the synthon. And of course, in the case of the Demerol synthesis, it's worth just mentioning briefly that we could apply this exact same idea to the other carbon-carbon bond here associated with the cyclic amine to generate highly analogous synthons and essentially replace this bond with a bond to hydrogen at the alpha carbon and another bond to a leaving group at the other carbon linked through the amine functionality. And that's how we got back to the dihalide structure that we used in the actual synthesis by just applying the exact same conceptual idea again. Synthons are, are really highly useful and more generally this idea of mechanistic retrosynthesis, pushing electrons around in your target is very important to keep in mind. This is how we start the process of being creative in synthesis. We think about these formal charges, what kinds of groups can we put within a real molecule to emulate the formal charges? In other words, to put partial charges where there are full charges in our synthons, or what combinations of reagents and starting materials can we use to achieve the same you know, synthon structure, the same type of structure? For example, can we combine an acidic alpha hydrogen with a strong base, something like LDA, to generate a stabilized negative charge at a carbon where we need it? In general, there are many different types of ways to do this, but the synthon provides us with a unifying structure, something that's common to all these different synthetic roots that really shows their underlying similarity. They're all relying on negative charge and an alpha carbon and partial positive charge at the carbon that's going to serve as the electrophile in this alkylation reaction. Now, there's a naming convention for synthons based on the charge, whether it's positive or negative, and the relationship of that charge to an important functional group nearby. And I'll show you some examples of these different types of synthons. The naming convention uses either D or A for a donor. These are negatively charged, as we'll see in a second, or acceptor, A for acceptor. These are positively charged. And the number in, in superscript here indicates the distance between the functional group and the donor or acceptor atom. And so an A1 synthon, for example, is something in which the functional group is one carbon away from the atom with positive charge now. And typically this, this atom that I'll just represent as a, a dot, either the donor or acceptor, is a carbon nine times out of ten. Likewise, a D1 synthon is a structure in which a functional group is linked directly to the donor carbon, which is now negatively charged. And a classic example of a D1 synthon is an enolate. Think about the ester enolate that we were working with on the previous slide. This has a functional group, the ester functional group directly attached to the alpha carbon, which is negatively charged in an enolate. So an ester enolate is, a, is an example of a D1 synthon. An example of an A1 synthon would be something like a benzylic carbocation with a phenyl ring stabilizing that positive charge adjacent to the atom bearing positive charge, say the carbon there. The other types of synthons follow a similar pattern. So for example, a D2 synthon contains a donor atom that is two carbons away from the key functional group. This might be something, for example, where the functional group stabilizes the negative charge through an inductive effect. The functional group is electron withdrawing by induction. Likewise, an A2 Synthon is a structure in which the functional group is separated from the now donor carbon by two atoms. And I should mention that even though I'm connecting these through single bonds, these could just as easily be double or triple bonds as well in a synthon. And so a good example, for instance, of an A2 synthon is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound where we have a carbonyl functional group, let's just call it a ketone for simplicity's sake, linked to an alkene, we can draw resonance structures that illustrate that this carbon is partially positively charged. And so we can think of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound as an A2 synthon, thinking of that functional group as the ketone and the acceptor being two carbons away from the functional group. An A3 synthon naturally has the functional group three carbons away from 
the acceptor atom here with positive charge, and an A0 has the acceptor atom directly on the functional group. A, a good example of an A0 synthon, which we'll see in the context of electrophilic aromatic substitutions, is the nitronium cation which is used to install the nitro group in electrophilic aromatic substitutions and other electrophilic substitution or addition reactions. This is the nitro functional group. It's a functional group in and of itself. And an atom within the functional group, the very nitrogen itself, bears positive charge. That's a nice example of an A0 synthon. Moving back to the donors, an analogous pattern applies. And so, for instance, a D3 compound contains a functional group 3 atoms or three carbons away from the donor atom which is negatively charged and the D0 synthons contain negative charge directly on the functional group itself. A good example of a D0 synthon, if we're keeping it really simple, is something like a halide anion X minus, Br minus, Cl minus, if we think of the bromine or the chlorine as a functional group in and of itself, those halide anions can be thought of as D0 synthons. A good example of a D3 synthon is something called a vinyligous enolate. Let's imagine we're working with an ester again. Let's just call it CO2R here. If that ester is linked through a double bond to a distant carbon over here, it's possible to develop negative charge here and generate an enolate that is stabilized via delocalization, via resonance, right? It's called vinyligous because there's an alkene or a vinyl group, we might say, between the anionic center and the functional group that's really stabilizing the negative charge in a sense, the, the electronegative functional group, the ester group. Just to finish highlighting the examples here, a good example of a D2 synthon could be something like a trifluoromethyl group linked to a carb anion where that trifluoromethyl group is stabilizing the negative charge by induction. So while you may not see this naming convention for synthons used a lot in practice, I like it because it helps us organize our thinking about how synthons work. They generally involve an atom with formal positive or negative charge some distance from a key functional group. And you'll start to group synthons together. This provides a nice conceptual framework for grouping synthons, seeing analogous synthons. For example, when we talk about electrophilic aromatic substitution, we will see a lot of these A0 synthons coming up again and again and again. These electrophilic species, generally highly reactive, with positive charge that install a functional group directly via either full or partial positive charge on a key atom inside the functional group.